Hi everyone, welcome back to DIY Geek YouTube channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to explain how I place or install this, uh, um, I guess, an SSD by itself inside a Dell uh, R630 Power Edge server. Um, I'm going to explain later on why I decided to install an additional, just regular um, SATA SSD, even though I have 10 um, different bays here but um, if you guys are familiar with this particular server um, layout at least these are all uh, SAS SAS SSD which is too much for me and um, is too many of them and I don't need I, I don't want to use SAS SSD uh, and it it um, requires this controller or a host bus controller. This is a Dell Perk controller. I'm going to probably take it out and remove it um, to save uh, power and money um, and then sell it. But I am using, for my main drives, I'm using NVMe uh, here using PCIe with the PCIe extender card right here. So I have no use of this, but I still need to have a boot drive. I don't want to boot from the PCIe because buying the Dell um, SSD, um, I think this is U.2 SSD is too expensive. So the best solution that I can think of is that I just need to have a boot drive and this is basically my boot drive. And uh, thankfully, um, there is a USB port right here uh, that we can tap into for power only. So this cable uh, I created using two pieces of uh, components. One is just a regular SATA power drive, uh, power cable that I cut off um, from an old power supply that is no longer used. And, um, and this part right here, actually I bought from Amazon and I'm going to put the link in the description um, if you would like to buy this uh, very handy cable. So uh, I used to cut off uh, other USB, um, I guess, devices or products to make this cable, but I don't have to do it anymore because you can buy this, I think, about three foot cable. So this is a USB-A connector and it plugs in right here. You can buy this cable for only, um, I think, eight or nine dollars for a pack of five so this only costs approximately about a um, dollar fifty which is an amazing price there's no need to 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 make your own and it basically comes with two cables uh, a red and a white and the red one is uh, positive five volt which I connect to the uh, red one and then the white one is the negative I connected to the two black wires and everything else uh, that goes into the uh, SATA power I just snip it or cut it off because I don't need it um, so okay I'm going to explain that uh, basically I just route the cable um, I tuck it in and bring it here and um, I'm just basically going back and forth in this little channel here uh, in between the I think PCIe slot expander number three or something like that uh, whatever that is and I'm um, just going back and forth back and forth trying to tug in all the extra access cabling and uh, leaving me just enough uh, then I go back here uh, leaving just enough for me to plug in for my uh, power right here all right so once that's done then I take a regular SATA 3 cable um, I like to use the one with the uh, with the claps or the latch so that it doesn't um, gets removed accidentally. And here I want to make sure that it's really tight, meaning I don't want to leave extra room so this thing would move around too much. So I usually would like it to be pretty tight making this corner and I actually bent the cable uh, to make sure that uh, it stays tight. Um, and then once again, I just uh, kind of uh, push it in and arrange it um, to make sure that they're all in there. And there are kind of some components here that 
has a uh, that is protruding out that you can tug it under that it helps keep it a little bit neat and tidier uh, and then when you come to down here there are two SATA ports uh, on the motherboard I found it kind of strange but the the white one does not really work uh, well for me um, I can only use the blue one uh, the one that is closest to the side of the chassis uh, the white one has uh, strange um, boot issues um, you know both in the UEF, UEFI mode uh, or regular BIOS boot uh, it just doesn't work well so uh, using this um, blue one and this method right here it works really well and uh, I've been very happy uh, with this particular solution it boots um, and I'm able to have an internal SSD just for the boot drive. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it useful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, if you want to buy the cable, the USB cable, please look at the link in my description. Um, if you like this kind of content, uh, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to see more do-it-yourself video like these and support my channel. Thank you.